Just, just like an ordinary township boy playing football, playing in the street, associating with friends, selling those peanuts and apples in the train, trying to make a living. As you know that we are from a very, very poor family. So to make ends meet, he was selling those apples and peanuts in the trains, just like at the township boy. Well, Solomon Mathlangu understood that his fight was for the total liberation of South Africans. That's according to Mkonto Wessies, where veteran Johnny Mothlala. If we would remember, Solomon Mathlangu's death came just immediately after 1976 uh, students uprising. And his hanging actually represents a new crop of MK cadres who were sent out after the 1976 riots. And he's coming back. In fact, the mission was to coincide with the first anniversary of Mkonto Wesizwe in 1977. Now, Solomon Mathangu, in that operation, displayed a sense of discipline, which is something that the youth of today can learn from. And I'll expand why I say that. You know, when Solomon Mathangu left the country, he left it with two of his friends, Temba Nkosi and Temba Masuku. And when he was infiltrated into the country, he was supposed to come in with the two. And then he approached the MK High Command and demonstrated why it would not be right to come back with the two people that he left with. Not because there was anything wrong with them, but simply because the three knew each other very well. And he realized that the fact that they knew each other very well might compromise the mission. And that's how he ended up with Monty Mutlo and George Mazibuku, both from Tutuza and not his friends from Mamelot. High level of discipline. But more than that, I think it is common knowledge that uh, Solomon Matangu never even fired one single bullet. The reason he never fired a bullet is because he was in, under instruction not to injure or kill anyone. And he knew firing a bullet might lead to the death of other people. And that's how he displayed his discipline up to the end, to the day that he was hanged. Even the day that he was hanged, he was still so gallant and so, you know, so cheering on. He, he, he demonstrated a level of, uh, you know, serious discipline. If you take the statement that he made, Tell my people I love them so much. Let them continue the struggle. He did not say, tell members of the ANC or my family, the people, because he understood that this fight was the to for the total liberation of the whole entirety in the sum of the people of South Africa, not only members of the ANC and so forth. And if you go back, there was a stage where he told his lawyers to stop with appeals because he knew that his hanging will symbolize a particular era in the liberation struggle of the people of South Africa. And hence, he says, my blood will nourish the freedom of these people of South Africa. And it's because he was an ardent scholar, something that people don't know about Solomon Matangu. He read Berkeley. He read Paul Frey, Pedagogy of the Press. He read the Art of Four by Santu. He read Franz Fanon. So he was very clear in his mind of what he was talking about. And that is the Solomon Matangu that we should today celebrate. Lest, lest we forget, he was only 22 years old. When he was prepared to infiltrate the country, he was actually 19 years old. Now, he was arrested in 1977 and hanged in 1979. Because when he was arrested, he was still very young, a 20-year-old young man. And the government of the day felt that they had to keep him until he's old enough to be hanged. They couldn't hang him at the age that he was arrested. Now, for a young man of that age to have such a vision is something very remarkable. That's why I'm saying we should commemorate the discipline of this young cadre of the movement rather than look at the other things. Now, Solomon Mathangu 
what other people might not know is that his death changed the thinking of MK Command in how do we infiltrate people into the country. The next group that got in was part of the G5, which was under the command of Lieutenant General Len Rasekhata, which operated from inside the country because they realized it's wrong to have a high command in Mozambique and the foot soldiers inside the country. You had to have your command structure and the full soldiers at the same place so that when the full soldiers pick up problems, they can immediately go to the high command and confer with the high command.